So as I say, you know, simply put, God exercises great care of us over his day and night. He watches over us. He sent his angels, his heavenly host, to protect us. They're ahead of us, behind us, beside us, around us always. Now, three of seven. I will be your strength. And it's written in Proverbs 18 and 10. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run into it and they are saved. Do you remember the song? You know, the righteous run into it. The Lord is just a high tower. The, uh, the high tower. The righteous run into it and they are saved. Yes, we might do that one day. All right. And what more can I say or add to that? Sorry, can you tell me what it was again? Being a what? Uh, I will be your strength. Thank you. Proverbs eighteen and ten. Strong. The name I of the. To stop this to write down. Sorry, what? I had to stop to put down what scripture it was, and then when I went back, I forgot what. Ah, oh, okay, right. Now, as I say, you when he says that the name of the Lord is a strong tower, and the righteous run into it, and they are saved. What more can I say to that? I really can't say anymore. That's, that says it all. You know, and it goes on in that song. There's a song that to you. And blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord Most High. Can't say any more about that. Well, I could, but I would just be waffling. <laughs> I want to pretend I don't always waffle. <laughs> so number four of seven. I will answer you. And it is written in Jeremiah 33 and 3. There we go with the Irish in it. 33 and a third. <laughs> I better watch this. It's being recorded. This is going up on YouTube and somebody might get offended at that. But, you know, come on. It's, it's, it's a lovely way that the Irish say three, isn't it? It's three. So I will answer you as I say in Jeremiah 33 and 3. And it's called to me and I will answer you. And I will tell you great and mighty things which you do not know. As human beings, we think we do know it all, especially men, some women as well. But we're, but we're right. We're, we're, we're always right, aren't we? But we don't know it. anything compared to what God can teach us. Like, and when everything in life does, you know, it seems that it's uh, heading for disaster. There is one thing that we can count on, and, and life will uh, 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 crash in on us at times. We can count on that God is faithful, and he will see us through it. Now, no matter how grey our lives may be, he and he alone will see us through. No matter how dark our future may seem, he and he alone will see us through. He really will. And... Our loving and faithful Heavenly Father, our Lord God Almighty, can, will and does restore our hope and redirect our course if we go off kilter, if we go off on our own merits and think, right, this is what I'm going to do and we'll make a mess of it. He will restore us. He really will. Now, number five of seven, I will provide for you. We're told in Jeremiah 29 and 11, it is written, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. Yeah, hear that? Plans to prosper you and not, not harm you. Yes, that means prosper spiritually, but he also wants us to do well as well. And because we remember, we are blessed to be a blessing. And you... I think that verse alone offers an awful lot of comfort to us. And because in our moments of despair, we must remember that God has a plan for his people. And if we stick to his will, hey, brilliant. And we can be sure that the plan that he has for our future is filled with his blessings. I often think that I'm blessed in a big time just having the people that I have around me, having the health that I have, having the family, my, my husband, my two pets that I have. But God's not finished, not by a long chalk. There's more and more and more blessings to come and I look forward to every blessing he's going to give me every day. You're realising this, 
that are blessings. He wants us to grow spiritually with him. And it's important, the important part of God's will for us is to grow spiritually in him. It's okay people reading the Bible cover to cover and knowing the Bible cover to cover and being able to quote every chapter and verse and every line and everything. I can't do that. I'm sorry. I can't do that. I'm human. I can't do it. But the few verses that I really do know off by heart and know exactly where they are, the important thing is I know the author. I know God. So don't start beating ourselves up that we have to be the same as everybody and we have to be able to know everything off, uh, off by heart uh, to be in God's favour. <coughs> knowing him, knowing a few verses and knowing him. And he will help us to grow spiritually. That's what he wants with us. And that does give us hope for our future when we realise that. Now on to six of seven. You're all thinking, oh, this is brilliant. You know, she's not going to talk too long today. She's at six of seven already, so that's good. <laughs> yeah, isn't it? So six of seven. I will give you peace. And doesn't he just? He does. In John 14 and 27, it is written. Jesus said, peace I leave with you. My peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. <coughs> now, we know that that was written, uh, Jesus said that and that was written. Jesus said that to the disciples when he's preparing them that he's going to be leaving. Think what they were going through. They're going to lose their master, their, their rabbi, their friend. He told them what was going to happen. He knew more of what was going to happen. But he left them peace. Now, you've heard me say it before, there are 366 uh, times in the Bible that says, do not be afraid. It should only have to be written once, to be honest with you, for us to stand on it. But apparently it's written 366 times. That's one for every day of the year and one for leap year. So it says there, just in John 14, 27, the last word to you, do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. Like many of us are dealing with stress and anxiety, grief and loss. And we all handle these things in different ways. There's no two people the same. What works for one person doesn't always work for another. And we do long for peace of mind and heart. And so did, as, as mentioned, the early disciples, the first disciples with Jesus. That's what they longed for as well. Now, as I said, started to say they were about to lose their best friend, their Messiah. Their souls were troubled and they were looking for something to fill the void. Yet Jesus said he was leaving them with peace, unlike worldly peace that only is momentary. You, there's happiness and there's joy, 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 joy. God wants us to be joyful, not happy, because happiness is fleeting, it's, it's materialistic. Jesus said he was leaving them with peace, unlike the worldly peace, which is merely an absence of conflict. That's what peace of the world is, just an absence of conflict. With Christ, any conflict that we're going through, any troubles coming through us, we can still have that gorgeous peace because we know that he's got it all covered for us. God can bring us peace even in the midst of our troubles. You know, it is written, that I have told you all this so that you may have peace in me. Here on earth you will have many trials and sorrows. But take heart because I have overcome the world. That's John 16, 33. In this world we may encounter many trials and sorrows. Some of these difficulties are inevitable and beyond our control. These can be endured with God's help people. And on the other hand, some of our sufferings are self-inflicted and can be avoided. But there's some of us that just, we run head on into trouble. We don't wait till it comes to our front door. We run downtown and grab it by the neck and drag it up to the door. We can't wait, so we can't. Oh dear, I used to be like that. You know, in such situations, whatever, uh, it's uh, self-inflicted or not out of our control, 
God still offers us peace. And we can have that peace with him. We really can, folks. As we muster the courage to make needed changes in our lives, God's forgiveness and loving acceptance can give us peace as we face our trials and sorrows. And we all know here that when we receive Jesus Christ as Lord and Saviour of our lives and the Holy Spirit started to work on us, there was a lot of change to be made. He changes us from the inside out. A lot of people uh, think that sort of, yeah, I want to be filled with the Holy Spirit, but I don't want to change. You know, no, I don't, I don't want you to change that. I want to keep that. I want, I want, I want it it's in his terms, not in terms. <coughs> you know, and even when the pain that we face is ultimately our own fault, he has the power to lead us down the path of life, down the right path. He won't let us falter. He has already overcome all the obstacles that we st that stand in our way. That's just that's. It's just powerful thinking that he has already overcome it all for us. We don't have to go through it. We leave it with him and it's done for us. Don't take it back. Seven of seven. I will always love you. That is written in Jeremiah 31 and 3. That the Lord appeared to us in the past saying, I have loved you with an everlasting love. I have drawn you with unfailing kindness. Now, when we read the whole chapter of that, uh, God paints a joyful picture of renewal in, in Jeremiah 31. And with all the details of repentance, sorrow and forgiveness, laughter, restoration and hope. Once again, God's people would follow his plan for them and he would receive them sorry receive their worship and praise you've heard me say before that God takes when we give our praise and worship to him he he inhales in our praise and worship and he loves us so much he exhale, ex ex exhales his glory out onto us again so don't hold back with your praise and worship for him please <coughs> Like we can experience this kind of restoration too. How? We start the process by admitting our need for God's healing in our lives. In a 12-step program for any addiction, the first step to recovery is admitting that you're either an alcoholic, a drug addict, a sex addict, uh, a gossipholic, or whatever. That's the first step. To recovery is admitting that you have a fault. God desires to rebuild his relationship with us. And no matter how far we might slip away from him and have strayed away from him, he's there waiting for us to come back to him. He's always with us. It's us that walk away from him, not the other way around. Now, also in Isaiah 43 and 1, it is written, Again, do not be afraid. Now you've got two of 366 folks said before. It only needs to be written once, but there's two. And in Isaiah 53, verses 4 to 5, it is written, Yet it was our weakness he carried. It was our sorrows that weighed him down. And we thought his troubles were a punishment from God for his, for, sorry, for our sins. But he was wounded and crushed for our sins. He was beaten that we might have peace. He was whipped and we were healed. And I hear Isaiah, the prophet Isaiah, describe the Messiah who would come and suffer on our behalf. And that was written about 500 years before the birth of Christ. Jesus Christ came to fulfill Isaiah's prophecy. And he, Jesus, came not because some of us needed to be saved from sin, but because all of us have strayed from God's path and need it for salvation. Jesus suffered the punishment of the sins that we committed. The words of the song. He paid a price. You know, he paid the debt he didn't owe. We owe a debt we can't pay. 
That's it. He did it all for us, folks. And he can completely understand what it feels like to suffer the pain that we're suffering. We might have, oh, I don't know what's going on, whatever. But when we think what we're going through, but we think what he went through for us, our pain and suffering pales in comparison to what he did for us. Like we can confess our anguish and feelings of hatred, shame and sorrow to Jesus. And he will and does sympathise with us and send us comfort. We have the comfort of the Holy Spirit. And when we accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Saviour of our lives, we have the Holy Spirit with us. We have the comfort of his Lord. That winds that up. I hope that was a blessing to you all. So remember, it only needs to be written once, but do not fear or fear not, whatever way you want to say it, because God is with us. You should have no fear. And if we have fear, we walk about in fear and anguish and wring our hands and worry. We're slapping Jesus in the face for he, he died for nothing then. We need to leave it with him. Miss Sue is going to come up and do communion, but give me a second and I'll bye-bye to everybody online. Uh, I'll talk with you all soon. Bye.